Celebrating 50 years, your news leader, this is the Jet 24 50th Anniversary Show. Hello, I'm Sean Lafferty. And I'm Jill McCormick. For the past 50 weeks, Jet 24 has been celebrating 50 years of broadcasting in Erie. And we've aired weekly segments from the date the station went on the air in 1966 and concluded this week our anniversary year. For the next hour, we'll take a look back at those 50 years when the towers first went up, all the way to our growth over the years as your news leader. Let's begin with our first decade on the air. There's been a lot of construction work going on along. We have details in this report from Action News 24's Matthew Long. We missed a big snow front that moved in last night. Good evening. The coldest temperatures of the season so far. In 1966, ground was broken for the World Trade Center. Cartoon genius Walt Disney died. Here in Erie, WJET-TV, Erie's new ABC affiliate, made its debut in April. Radio pioneer Myron Jones, already successful with Jet Radio, was gambling on the future of television with his new TV station in Summit Township. Jones says his interest in TV stemmed from Jet Radio's dominance as Erie's radio news leader. We had the spirit of news, and I thought uh, television, we could, uh, we could, we could capture the uh, news audience there and go from there. Joining the festivities for Jet's first broadcast that April day, Erie's new mayor, Louis Tulio, Erie's morning mayor, Jet Radio's Frank Martin, and TV station general manager, Pete Katisha. The broadcast began with a 24-hour movie marathon, and the very first movie, Creature from the Black Lagoon. In 1967, WJET-TV reported on sports history, the first ever Super Bowl between the Green Bay Packers and the Kansas City Chiefs. Also that year, Dr. Christian Barnard performed the first heart transplant and the ocean liner RMS Queen Elizabeth II was launched. Closer to home, air shows thrilled audiences at Erie International Airport. Erie's Danny Kuczynski won the World Horseshoe Pitching Championships at the age of 18. And following racial unrest, Erie Mayor Lou Tulio did what he could to restore peace to volatile neighborhoods like East 18th and Holland and East 12th and Franklin Avenue. 1968, a year marked by national tragedy. In April, civil rights leader Martin Luther King was assassinated at a Memphis, Tennessee motel. In June, Senator Robert Kennedy was gunned down in a Los Angeles hotel. Here at home, the eerie man who helped develop what we know as the wind chill factor, explorer and geographer Paul Seipel, died in 68. The once popular Lawrence Hotel, where JFK campaigned for the presidency in 1960, fell to the wrecking ball eight years later. And on WJET-TV, the Lawrence Welk Show remained popular family entertainment on ABC. And what were you doing in 1969? Astronaut Neil Armstrong was walking on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for man. Richard M. Nixon was inaugurated 37th President of the United States, and who could forget Woodstock? Here in Erie, Erie City Council published this booklet in it describing the average median Erie home having a value of $11,500. And the former Erie Sports Store building on State Street collapsed as footers for the new store at 7th and State were being poured. In 1970, unrest over the ongoing Vietnam War spread to the campus of Kent State University, where four students were killed and nine injured when members of the Ohio National Guard opened fire on an anti-war protest. Music legends Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin both died of drug overdoses. And the Beatles, they broke up this year. And by the end of 1970, each of them had recorded solo albums. Here in Erie, Mayor Lou Tulio declared a state of emergency after a general alarm fire destroyed the Arthur F. Schultz building, gutting a warehouse, garage, and several homes. The Erie Times Publishing Company moved into its new headquarters at 12th and Sassafras. And it may be a wave pool in 2015, but 45 years ago, Waldemere Amusement Park began construction of the Wacky Shack. On WJET-TV that year, Bob Sutherland was at the local news anchor desk, and Monday Night Football debuted on ABC with Howard Cosell, Frank Gifford, and Don Meredith in the broadcast booth. In 1971, the 26th Amendment lowered the voting age in the United States to 18. A new stock market index called NASDAQ debuted. Cigarette advertising on TV was outlawed. 
The Pittsburgh Pirates won the World Series, and in 1971, vacations changed forever when Disney World opened its doors in Orlando, Florida. And on ABC Television on Jet 24, here were the shows you were watching. I'll make a movie about the Pilgrims. Hey, buddy, what's new? Also on ABC... Brian's song. Brian Piccolo has cancer. I'm not going to let it stop me. And that was 1971. 1972, it was a very busy year. American swimmer Mark Spitz won a record seven medals at the Summer Olympics in Munich, Germany. The international athletic competition turned tragic, however, when 11 Israeli athletes were killed by Arab gunmen. Governor George Wallace was shot three times in an assassination attempt that left him paralyzed. A break-in at the Watergate complex in Washington, D.C. was reported to police. The Equal Rights Amendment was approved by the U.S. Senate. And here in Pennsylvania, the remnants of Hurricane Agnes resulted in a flooding disaster, leaving 250,000 homeless and a billion dollars in damage. President Nixon even declared the state a national disaster. And you know what happened October 30th, 1972? The start of TV24's 6 o'clock news with Bob Sutherland, weatherman Cliff Morrison, and Doug Davis on sports. Bob Sutherland, who was a Sunday editor of the uh, Erie Times, uh, uh, he worked for us part-time and, ad and admired our news department and, in fact, coached us in a number of things because he was... He was a, uh, uh, you know, a true journalist. 1973 has something very much in common with 2015, a Triple Crown winner. Secretariat was the first horse to win the title in 25 years. Other big news of the year, Roe versus Wade made abortion a constitutional right. Former President Lyndon Johnson died of a heart attack the day before President Nixon announced a ceasefire to end the war that marred LBJ's dreams for a great society. Watergate hearings began in the U.S. Senate, and President Nixon told the nation, I am not a crook. But his vice president, Spiro Agnew, resigns and pleads guilty in federal court to tax evasion. And in news with a local connection, astronaut commander Paul Weitz of Harbor Creek was sent into space to repair the crippled Space Lab 1, the mission a success. And finally, yours truly graduates from Erie's Academy High School and begins a radio broadcasting career seven years before joining WJET-TV. In 1974, Vice President Gerald Ford became the 38th president of the U.S. the moment Richard Nixon's letter of resignation was handed to Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. President Ford pardoned Nixon, declaring the national nightmare is over. Muhammad Ali was stripped of his heavyweight title for refusing the Vietnam War draft years earlier. And the 55 mile an hour speed limit was imposed to preserve gas, both locally and nationwide. Here in Erie, a new venue for sports and entertainment opened its doors. The Erie County Fieldhouse hosted rock concerts, hockey games, and so much more from 1974 to 1983. And on ABC News on Jet 24. Good evening, I'm Howard K. Smith in Washington. I'm Harry Reasoner in New York. The ABC Evening News, a daily window on the world. Before there was Craig Smiley, or Mike Gallagher, or even John Evans on the Jet 24 Sports Desk, there was this guy, Doug Davis, our Jet 24 Sports Anchor, from 1968 to 1979. Take a good look at the original Sports Desk, where Davis began his TV career. The building was new, we're out in the middle of nowhere. This was a background. All it was was cement blocks, a couple of two by fours and a WJET sports sign, and there was just a regular desk. That was it. It was great. We had more fun. Speaking we of fun, fun, as the new studio improved, so did Doug's hairline. Today, he admits back then, nothing about him was really quite as it appeared, not even his name. Never had glasses. I had to put glasses on and a hairpiece. Of course, my real name is now Doug Davis, so I told somebody to take my hair off take my parcel out, take my glasses off, and go, go downtown, go buy a new house. <laughs> Davis is now 78 years old, a diehard Cleveland Browns fan, and spends his time as a volunteer for several local charities. 
In 1976, Jet 24 anchorman Bob Sutherland, known as Sudsy, weatherman Cliff Morrison, and reporter Dick Clancher were all part of a special broadcast looking back on Jet's first decade on the air. With that introduction, I think it's only right that we leave our news for a moment, have a little cake-cutting ceremony with our guest of honor, Ann Margaret Deeds. She's 10 years old today, and so are we. Ann Deeds Miller still lives in Erie, and she remembers that day fondly. You know, I remember so much of it. You know, I, I have very clear memories of conversations and everything that happened. The cake and a gift celebrated the day Ann and Jet 24 were born. We would like to have you have that uh, little birthday present because it's a special day for you, too. Thank you. Mm. Oh, wow. They gave me this uh, beautiful sterling silver ring, and I took it down to the jeweler and had it sized, and they engraved it for me, and they actually engraved it, WJET to Ann, 76. And so, you know, it became something that I wore all the time. Uh, my daughter, Mary Claire, um, funny enough, is also 10 years old right now, so I thought this would be a neat thing for her to see her mom at the same age. Stay with us as we continue our look back at 50 years of broadcasting in Erie. Hi there, Cliff Morrison, your weatherman on TV24 from back in the 70s, wishing this great station a happy 50th anniversary to your newsleader.